What's up, Coaster Community? Millennium Force Man back in the video. Today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Nitro at Six Flags Great Adventure, a BM hyper coaster that opened in 2001. And the stats for this coaster is a 230 foot height, 215 foot drop, a max speed of 80 miles an hour, and a length of 5,394 feet. So these stats look really good, right? And the experience for most is probably the same. This ride is known for its many big drawn out floater airtime hills and I know many people who rate this as their number one coaster or put it at their number one bucket list coaster and it seems like virtually everyone else has it in the top 10 for both categories. However for me it's actually one of the 10 least favorite coasters I've ridden excluding kitty coasters. Not because the ride is rough or uncomfortable, in fact I can actually handle lots of roughness or just an uncomfortable ride in general but this ride, ride is just super boring i feel like i could take a nap on it just because of how comfortable it is which i'll go into later but also because how forceless this ride is i honestly did not feel any force on either of my two rides at all and i really do not like a ride no matter how tall or fast or long or whatever that just in my opinion doesn't really do that much and that's really uh, nitro just really didn't seem like it did that much so anyways that's a, what i'm gonna dig into today so this coaster was really anticipated for me obviously it's one of the main reasons to go to great adventure so i was really excited for it when i went and it's really uh visible i mean it's 230 feet tall you can see it as soon as you get close to the park it's kind of off in its own little like area it's uh, in on the like right side of the park. It's got its own space near where Jersey Devil is gonna uh, go soon, but it's got it's got like a kind of secluded setting. It's got an L-shaped out and back uh, layout, and the L portion actually kind of goes in its like own peninsula. There's lots of lakes and trees everywhere. It looks really good. There's like this one maintenance area uh, near the first drop and like the helix. That's really the only mad part, but you know you gotta kind of put those somewhere, but. Other than that, the ride actually looks really good, and the same can be said for the color scheme. Mo a lot of people tend to hit on this, but I really like it. It's like this uh, hot pink red for the track, and the spine is orange, and the supports are blue. And I actually think it kind of pops, uh, for me at least. So you make your way to uh, the entrance and the queue, and the entrance is really nothing special. It's just like a giant sign that says Nitro. It's like over your head, and... Then you make your way through the queue, and this queue really was normal. You probably go through it very fast because these operations are known for being uh, super fast. I went here in the middle of the summer, uh, but there was absolutely nobody at the park. It was like absolutely dead for some reason. I have no clue why. So I uh, went through this really fast, but even on good days, these ops are really fast. And uh, there's three trains, and these B&Ms just have really good capacity, and the same can be said. For Nitro, so you make your way through the queue, and there's a lot of Snickers ads for some reason. I don't really know why Six Flags chose that, but you know, there's always they always have to have their ads. So you make your way to the station. The station really look, what doesn't look that cool. They got the Nitro theme playing, which it's nice that they have soundtrack. Uh, soundtracks are like some coasters in the U.S. It seems to be more of like a European thing, but it's nice. It's okay. Like it's really just okay. I guess it's a nice little touch to the ride. Yeah, but you make your way. Uh, to the trains and uh, to my rides I sat uh, once near the front and once near the back uh, there's eight or nine cars I believe so uh, the newer ones tend to have eight or seven cars the newer b &M hypers and gigas but uh, this one has nine so uh, I guess that's cool and also makes capacity higher as well so you're greeted with these b &M clamshell restraints found on all the hypers and gigas and they're really comfortable I, I can easily get room with these every single time and they're, they're a bit bulky, but they're really comfortable. They're padded to perfection and just really nice. They allow uh, for the airtime that you would get on this coaster. And the track profiling itself, really smooth. These B&Ms are always smooth. I did not feel any rattle or vibration at all with this coaster. So really uh, excels in every single comfort category, in my opinion. So after you leave the station, you take a 180-degree left-hand turn. Uh, you go into like a dip uh, while you're in the turn. Don't really know why B&M chose to put that there. And then you make your way to the 230 foot tall lift hill. And it's a chain lift. It takes a long time to get up this thing. 
almost too long, uh, but it does give you a great view, so I guess that it's good in that uh, department. So, uh, but anyways, you're gonna make your way to the top uh, in in a quite a bit. It's like takes like a minute or something around there. It felt really long, but you're eventually gonna make it to the top, obviously, and then you drop 215 feet. I don't know how steep this was. It, it might have been like 75. Uh, degrees, I'd say around 70, 75 degrees, but I did not feel one bit of air time at all. It, it was just kind of n a nothing. It, it was sad because it looks really sustained. It looked like it would be really sustained. Give some nice floaty uh, air time floater on that drop, but I did not get anything, unfortunately, and I did not get any positives uh, bottoming out of this drop, uh, either pulling out, didn't get anything there. Then you rise into this uh, other really tall hill, which uh, once you start going down it, banks and turns 90 degrees to your left. Uh, again, it, it absolutely crawled over this hill. I felt like it was going to valley. It gave no air time or forces whatsoever. After that, you make your way over another camelback. This one being uh, very traditional. And it, again, seemed like it was going to valley. And I got zero, zero air time over this hill and all these hills. And after that, there was a random trim break. Which I've never seen them at the bottom of the hills besides for this ride. At least for the BM Hypers. So that was weird. I don't really know how much it trimmed. I don't think it really trimmed that much. But then you go into a hammerhead turn and it does crawl through this. But I actually liked it because you were going so slow through the uh, at the top that like you were starting to like lean to your inside. And that, that was really interesting. It felt really nice. And then after that you make your way to the bottom. You go over another uh, camelback. This hill, again, no air time. And the next hill, very similar to like the first one where you uh, go over an airtime hill and then you turn like when you're going down it. Again, absolutely zero airtime to be found anywhere. And then you go into an upper helix. And I've heard that people gray out, but I seriously do not understand the physics behind that because I pulled absolutely one G-force on this thing. I don't think we m maxed out over like 1.1 Gs. It was that bad. And like... It was so, like, slow. It took so long to go through it. I literally, like, just wanted it to be over. And, like, I actually like Helixes, guys. Like, Helixes, I don't hate them. But this one, really, I'm just like, can this thing end or do something? Like, turn up the positives or something? I did not feel anything whatsoever. And then if you thought the pacing was bad already, you hit a mid-course breaker. And when I was there, it came to a screeching halt on both of my rides. So that was annoying because I was already very upset with the pacing. It crawled over Every single air time, it was felt like it was going to valley every time. Even during the upwards helix, it felt like it was going to valley. So when I hit a mid-course and it completely stopped, or almost completely stopped, I was pretty mad. Then you go over uh, these three bunny hills. Again, zero air time. These ones were kind of like the worst. I feel like I was going to valley over these more than any of the other hills, which is really a shame because I've heard that like Holiday in the Park, uh, you actually like kind of like fly over these and get some nice floater air time. But when I was here, uh, no air time over these and anything at all. Then you make your way into the break run, and it's uh, one of those nice long B&M break runs uh, that they sometimes stack on, but not really here because they have great ops. Uh, but that concludes your ride. So yeah, Nitro, um, it looks really good. I'll give it that. Uh, probably draws in, or does draw in a lot of GP and enthusiasts. It, they did great in that department. Uh, theming, not really themed to anything, but it, it just looks really good and it's presented very well, which is interesting for Six Flags Coaster. However, the ride experience, I was really, I really did not like it at all. Like, it, like I said, it was really boring. The pacing, it crawled through everything. Yeah, you have top speed of 80 miles an hour, but it hit that, went up into a hill, you slowed and almost stopped, and then did that same thing over and over again. And I got no airtime or positives or any other force whatsoever. And I was really expecting like at least some like floater airtime. And I'm not really the biggest fan of that either, but I did not get any single like moment of airtime at all on this ride and that was really annoying but i guess i could see if you like this ride like if if you want like a long ride that's really comfortable you know it doesn't doesn't like hurt your body or do anything like crazy but it's nice and tall and long and f like fast and just feels good overall then i can see why you like this ride but for me personally i want a, a ride that kicks up the intensity and the speed and gets your blood pumping and everything like that. But this ride just did not do that for me, and that's why I just personally do not like Nitro. But uh, let me know in the comments if you are a big fan of Nitro or uh, you dislike it uh, like I do. So that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody.